April the 22nd, 2015, is the anniversary of a very sad and unpleasant event in warfare. It is the 100th anniversary of the first use of chlorine as a poison gas in the First World War. It was used by the Germans in an attack on French troops outside the Belgian city of Ypres, which in the First World War the English soldiers called wipers because they couldn't pronounce French. So what happened was that a large amount of chlorine, more than 100 tonnes, was released from cylinders and swept across the battlefield onto the totally unprepared troops. Chlorine gas is very corrosive, turns copper and brass, the sort of things that soldiers have on the metal of their buckles, turns green. It attacks the eyes and it also, if it gets in the lungs, your lungs start filling up with fluid. So it's really unpleasant. And it was a huge success. Large numbers of people and all animals died and the whole front was opened up. But the Germans had not expected it to be a success and didn't have the troops that were, could pour forward to fill the vacuum. Night fell and by the next day the people were back. The French or troops were back to defend the front. So it really wasn't much advantage. This whole chlorine attack was the idea of Fritz Haber, the famous chemist that we've all heard of for the Haber process making ammonia. He became really enthused, if not obsessed, with chemical warfare. And this obsession led to him being dubbed a pretty evil genius in his lifetime, and he's still remembered for his role in chemical warfare almost more than his role in providing fertilisers that makes all the food that we eat possible. What is surprising is that a Canadian officer, the Canadians were next to the French, realised it was chlorine remarkably quickly. And so primitive precautions were taken pretty quickly. Nothing very sophisticated. People urinating onto their handkerchiefs to cover their faces. So the water will absorb some of the chlorine. I don't think it is a very effective, so I would not suggest that you try this if there is a chlorine release. The important thing is that this opened up a whole era of chemical warfare, and within a few weeks, if not months, both sides were firing chemicals at the others. There are two important points that we need to remember. The first thing is that chlorine, this greeny-yellow gas, is really quite an unpleasant material. Neil, our really tough technician, is quite frightened of it. Many years ago, he was exposed to a small amount of chlorine gas and he still remembers. That was long before periodic videos and all the safety precautions we now take. But the second point is that people are still using chlorine as a chemical weapon. In yesterday's newspaper, there was a story that said that in Syria, barrel bombs of chlorine are still being used. So I think it is important to remind you that although chemistry is a fascinating and exciting subject, it can be misused. And it is our duty as chemists to make sure that chemistry is used for the benefit of society not for its destruction. In the First World War, better chemical weapons than chlorine, particularly mustard gas, which is a compound of carbon, hydrogen, sulphur and chlorine, was invented, which lasted on the battlefields for months. And in the Second World War and afterwards, so-called nerve gases, where just a few milligrams of the compound can kill somebody, so using chlorine is a pretty primitive weapon, but when you are an armed force fighting against civilians who have no protection, 
chlorine is a cheap and pretty reliable way of making things very uncomfortable, if not actually killing people. And chlorine is available industrially very easily, whereas chemical weapons are more difficult to get hold of. 